Praise God. Progress. Bless you, the Lord, tonight. God bless you and welcome tonight. Amen. In a special way, we certainly want to welcome you to our session here tonight. Let's just bow our heads as we want to uh, ask God's blessing tonight. Amen. As we want to make a start. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for your for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your choosing us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace upon our lives, Lord God, Father. We thank you for, Lord, uh, nothing that we could do, God, Father, but, Lord, what you've already done for us, Lord Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for a way that has been made, Lord, that we could come into your presence, Father. And so now, Lord, we just want to just pause our daily lives for a moment. Lord, that we could hear from you tonight, Lord, Lord, every fiber of our being, O oh God, Father. Lord, that every part of us, Lord, could be, uh, Lord, captured by you tonight, Lord. We pray for your presence to come down upon each and every one here tonight, Lord, that's gathered, Lord, in the different places and homes. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit to visit them and touch their lives, O oh God, Father. Bless us as we sing together, Lord, and may anoint them as they inspire them as they worship and get into the spirit to hear the word, Lord, that we could hear from from you, get us in the right atmosphere, in the right frame of mind, in the right spirit of heart, Lord, that we can hear from you tonight and open up ourselves, Lord, to what you would have to speak to us tonight, Lord Jesus. May we receive it, Lord, Lord, with uh, uh, willing hearts tonight. And Lord, may you bless our time, Lord, of prayer, God, Father, as we call upon your name, Lord. Grand Almighty God, we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Why don't you give, our Lord, uh, give the Lord... Uh, hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Through the blood, through the blood, oh, we can come into his presence. Your Father, glory to God, Amen. Do you love Him tonight? Glory to God. I have decided. 
to follow Jesus. For I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, and I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Oh, I have decided. Oh, to follow Jesus. Lift your hands now where you are and just begin to worship him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Oh, Lord, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. Sing praises to the God on high. Throughout the day, and thy faithfulness by night, and thy faithfulness by night. Oh, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, sing your praises to the God of Sing his mercy. Sing of mercy throughout the day and thy faithfulness by night and thy faithfulness by night. Oh, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. Sing his praises to God on high, sing of mercy throughout the day, and thy faithfulness by night, and thy faithfulness by night. 
I just want to be where you are Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar Draw me near to where you are I just want to be where you are oh, Dwelling daily in your presence Take me to the place where you are I just want to be with you I want to be where you are Dwelling in your presence Feasting at your table Surrounded by your glory In your presence that's where I always want to be I just want to be I just want to be with you One more time, I just want I just want to be I just want to be with you Brother Anthony, God bless you. Praise the Lord. And thanks for being here tonight, all of you. Let us bow our heads to the foot of a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are living in this, these times, critical times, where the climax of all the ages, where this rapture in condition, this rapture bride will take on a body change, Lord. All of that coming, Lord, into this season and time. Father, speak to us tonight by your word. And bring it near entrance to minister to us into prayer. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you and welcome. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to two portions of scripture. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, and Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And I'll read another one after that, but let's read Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. In the Amplified, it says, be earnest and unwearied and steadfast in your prayer life, being both alert and intent in your praying with thanksgiving. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let me read it again. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And the Amplified it reads, Let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. And our last scripture for now will be Psalms 37, reading verse 23 to 24, Psalms 37. And the reason this wise, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. May God bless his word. Well, fellow title for this little exhortation tonight, it's don't quit, press the battle. And if you have not heard Wednesday night service, you should. It's an important service, nestor in time again with the Gideon. And do just think it's just, well, Gideon, just hear a few words, no. Listen to what the spirit is speaking. Look into what the word that God is speaking to us. And God will use different brothers, different gifts, different talents and ministries to get his word across to us. So this is the title, Don't Quit. Press the battle. Just keep pressing. And sometimes we get despondent. Sometimes we feel to quit. And to quit is to give up, to let go, to resign, to depart, to give in, to drop out. To quit is to stop doing something. Stop 
Stop praying, stop worshiping, stop reading your Bible, stop having fellowship. You're quitting. I want to encourage you tonight, don't quit. Now, Brother Brian gave a story here in the Rejected King, and I thought that it would be good to bring this to you. He said, I woke up, I thought I'm dreaming so much, I wonder why. I looked down and told my wife laying by me. I raised up on my pillow, and many of you people have done, put my head upon the headboard of the bed and put my hands behind me. I was laying there like this and said, well, I was just wonder what it will be the other side. I'm already 50. I haven't done nothing yet. If I can only do something to help the Lord, if I know I won't be mortal, half of my time is gone, at least more than half. I live to be as old as my people. Still half of my time is gone. I looked around. I was laying there fixing together. It was about seven o'clock. I said, I believe I'll go down to church this morning. If I'm hoarse, I'd like to hear, but I'll never preach. So I said, are you awake, honey? And she was sleeping very soundly. Now, I don't want you to miss this. It has changed me. I can't be the same Brother Branham that I was. I looked and I heard something kept saying, you are just starting. Press the battle. Just keep pressing. I shook my head and then I thought, I, I probably was just thinking like this, you know, a person can get some imagination. And I said, I just probably imagined that. It said, press the battle, keep going, keep going. And I said, maybe I said it. So I put my lips between my teeth, put my hand over my mouth and here it come again. Just keep pressing if you only knew what was at the end of the road. And I heard something say, would you like to see just beyond the curtain, I said it would help me so much. And I looked, and in just a moment, one breath, I come into a little place, that, and I look back, and there I was laying on the bed. This is a strange thing. Now, I would not want you to repeat this. This is before my church, my sheep that I'm pastoring, whether I was in my, this body or not, whether it was a translation, I was like in a vision. And I could look there, and then I hit this little place. I seen so many people come running, screaming, oh, our precious brother. And I looked, and a young woman, maybe in the early 20s, 18 to 20, they were throwing their arms around me and screaming, oh, precious brother. And here come young men in the brilliance of young manhood. Their eyes glistening, look like stars in a dark night. Their teeth as white as pearl. They were screaming and grabbing me and screaming, oh, precious brother. And I stood and I looked and I was young. I stopped and I looked and I was young. I looked back at my old body laying there with my hands behind my head. I said, I don't understand this. And these young women throwing their arms around me. Now I do realize this is a mixed audience. And I say this with the sweetness, with the mellowness of the spirit. Men cannot put your arm around women without a human sensation. But it wasn't dear. There was no yesterday, no tomorrow. They didn't get tired. I've never seen such pretty women in all my life. They had their hair way down to their waistline, long skirts to their feet, and they were just hugging me. It wasn't a hug like even my own sister sitting here would hug me. They were not kissing me. I was not kissing them. It was something I have not got the vocabulary. I haven't got the words to say. Perfection wouldn't touch it. Superb would even touch it nowhere. It was something you have to be dear. I looked this way and that way, and they were coming by the thousands. I said, I don't understand this. And here come Hope, that was my first wife. She ran and never said my husband. She said, my precious brother. And when she hugged me, there was another woman standing there that hugged me. And then Hope hugged this woman. And I thought, this has to be something different. I thought. Oh, would I ever want to go back to that old carcass again? I look around there and I thought, what is this? And I look real good and I said, I can't understand this. But hope seemed to be like a guess of honor. She was no different, but just like a guess of honor. And I heard a voice that spoke to me that was in the room and said, this is what you preached was the Holy Ghost. This is perfect love. And nothing can enter here without it. I am more determined than ever in my life 
that it takes perfect love to enter there. There was no jealousy. There was no tiredness. There was no debt. Sickness could never end there. Mortality could never make you old. They could not cry. It was just one joy, oh my precious brother. And they took me up and set me on a big high place. And I thought, I'm not dreaming. I'm looking at my body laying there on the bed. And they set me up here. And I said, oh, I shouldn't be set here. And here come women and men from both sides, just in the bloom of youth, screaming. And one woman was standing there. She screamed, oh, my precious brother, we are so happy to see you here. I said, I don't understand this. And then that voice that was speaking from above me said, you know, it is written in the Bible that the prophets were gathered with their people. I said, yes, I remember that in the scripture. He said, why? This is when you will gather with your people. I said, then they are real. I can feel them. Oh, yes. I said, there are millions, but there's not that many Branhams. And the voice said, they are not Branhams. They are converts. They are the ones you have led to the Lord. And said, some of them women, dear, that you think are so beautiful, were better than 90 years old when you led them to the Lord. No wonder they are screaming, oh, precious brother. And they scream all at once. If you hadn't have went, we wouldn't have been here. I looked around and I thought, well, I don't get it. I said, oh, where is Jesus? I want to seem so bad. They said, no, he's just a little higher right up that way. Someday he will come to you. You see, you were sent for a leader and God will come. And when he does, he will judge you according to what you taught them. First, whether they go in or not. And we will go in according to your teaching. I said, oh, I'm so glad that Paul, does he have to stand like this? Does Peter have to stand like this? And say, yes. I said, and I preach every word that they preach. I've never deviated from it one side to the other. Where they baptized in the name of the Jesus Christ, I did too. Where they taught the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I did too. Whatever they taught, I did too. And then people scream and said, we know that. We know we are going with you someday back to earth. Said Jesus will come. And you'll be judged according to the word that you preached us. And then if you are accepted at that time, which you will be, said you will present us to him as your trophies of your ministry. Said you will guide us to him and altogether we'll go back to earth to live forever. I said, do you? Do I have to return back now? Yes. But keep pressing on. Oh my, keep pressing on, saints. And then from another message, my angels shall go before thee. He said, we who are in contact with the spiritual realm of God. You said, I was prayed for and it didn't get me healed. I guess there's nothing to it. What a poor crow beat you make for God. See, God warns somebody who will not give up. A winner never quits and a quitter never wins. If you got to stay and call it, call things right before Satan. Tell him it's this way. Thus said the Lord, the Lord has said it so, and it is written, it is written, no matter what he says, it is written. You said, but Abraham never got to touch me. It is written, but Abraham never got done no healing. God done your healing. It's already did it. It's written, whatever I ask and believe God, I shall receive it. It is mine, my personal property. And saints, we have to begin to claim things as our personal property. Don't generalize it. Healing is mine. Uh, deliverance is mine, joy is mine, victory is mine. You're claiming it as your personal profit. But the brand. Now go and let this some conference. Now go and let it get that way. He brought Israel right into a trap. Mountains and deserts on both sides. Pharaoh army pursuing. Thousands of chariots and spears and a bunch of humble little poor slaves not armed with nothing come down to the Dead Red Sea. There's bank. Here was the dust of the chariots coming and here was a mountain on either side. No way. Looked like God was a bad military man. Left his people with no retreat. Then the prophet slipped in here this year. Now. Sometimes he does that. He let the doctor walk away and say, you ain't going to live. You're going to die. That cancer is going to kill you. 
you will never get out of that chair. He seems like he leaves you with no retreat, but he is your retreat. Climb back into his arms. Lord, he's my refuge. He's my mighty tower. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower. The righteous run into the safe, the towers of refuge. He's our refuge. No other refuge but him. I don't want to know any other refuge. He's my refuge. He's my rock in the very land. A shelter in a time of storm. I remember the first time I ever spoke in tongues. I was preaching at the Milton Baptist Church and I was out there preaching and I got wound up and all those Baptists sitting there looking at me and the Holy Ghost came upon me and I jump out in the middle of the aisles and begin to speak with tongues. I thought, well, what's happening now? I never knew anything about it. But when I started back, I heard my lips say this, I'm the rock in a weary land, the tower, the refuge in a time of storm. Oh, I wondered. And everyone looked at one another like geese in a yard, looking like, and I felt the same way because I didn't know. But I know that something had happened to me. And I found a tower, a hiding place. I never wanted nothing else since then but that spot, that blessed hiding place. Right in the line of duty, right under the fire of the enemy, they was looked like all nature was trembling for them. What is to do? What kind of whole conference when the church gets to a place that this one is doing that, this one doing this? Everything upside down. Don't quit the church. Hold a conference. Have a prayer meeting somewhere. Moses elected a place. He got behind a rock. And said, Lord God. Great Jehovah. Who met me in a burning bush. That experience have never left me. I've done everything you told me to do. I'm standing in the line of duty. I brought your people here. As you said, yonder hangs the pillar of fire. There stands Pharaoh army. Here's the mountains and the Red Sea. What must I do, Lord? Must I give myself up? What must I do? In other words, do I quit? What do I do? And I can see angels begin to set on wrong each. What a conference. And after a while, the spirit of the Lord, I can see the pillar of fire move over. What was it? There was a decision made. What are going to do? Give us and go back and try again? Listen, I take this tonight. God never goes backward. Never sends his people to go back to what Moody said, Sankey said, Finney said, go forward, amen. And I'm all the close. And this is a key scripture I wanted to get to tonight. On Proverbs 24, reading from verse 15, 16 to 18. I've printed here 15, but it's from 16. And it says here, for just man, Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Verse 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. Let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Least the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. We want to take a little peek at this scripture. For a just man fall it seven times and rise it up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Now I want you to note that there are two fallings here. The falling of a just man and the falling of a wicked man. I want to say tonight, falling is part of this journey. The difference is how you are living when you fall. The just man falls. And the wicked fall, just or righteous, is being upright and honest walking before God. A just man will fall. Someone walking upright will face failure. But it's his condition when he falls. So thinking because you are serving the Lord, believing his word, you will not or cannot face failure is not correct. If you think that way, you will have disappointments. A just man will fall, not just once, more than once. The scripture declares seven times. We tend to wipe out others on just one fall. But a just man fall it seven times, more than once. A just man, the key here, he rises up again. This is it, friends. Don't 
quit. Press the battle. Get back up and keep pressing on. Failure is not final. Jehovah has the final say. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Lord, I don't know who this is for, but Lord, this is the word. This is the truth. Sometimes we have fairy tales in our mind about serving you, but this is your word, Lord. A righteous man may fall, but you would hold them up. God, falling doesn't mean finish. Failure doesn't mean abject failure, and that's the final thing. As the song says, Jehovah has the final say. Oh God, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and they call us out. And as we walk, different things happen, different tragedies, different things we can't explain. And we hold on to Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love you, to them what they call according to your purpose. Sometimes it's to instruct us. Sometimes it's to rebuke us. Sometimes it's to guide us, to grow us, to mature us, to form character in us. But whatever it takes, Lord, it will take all these experiences to make us who we are. It's not just what when we fall, but the condition we are in, in falling. Father, bless the people tonight, those who are here in this virtual room here, struggling, those who are here who might be in some condition here, free them tonight that they wouldn't think about quitting. They wouldn't think about letting go and giving up or walking away, but they will think about pressing the battle. Press the battle. Keep pressing on. Bless them tonight as they get on in prayer. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you. I trust this exhortation tonight would have helped you in some way and be a blessing to you in some way that God, would, that your faith will be anointed in God that and struggles and battles is part of this whole program that God has. God be with you as we get on in prayer at this time. Praise the Lord.
Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for your truth, the truth of your word, Lord. Oh, God, that your word will live. The word will become fresh and dwell among us. Father God, come down, Lord, even now and have the preeminences, have the oversight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for answering prayer. We thank you for giving breakthroughs and deliverances. We thank you for healing touch, Lord. We thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost being poured out. We thank you, O oh God, for deliverance and for spiritual breakthrough, Lord Jesus. O oh God, and for people not giving up, but to hold on and press on and keep pressing the battle and keep going on, moving on, Lord. O oh God, as Bergillian said, they keep the goal in mind, they keep the target in mind, they keep the prize in mind. Lord, we press towards that mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Oh God, may the anointing take a hold upon your people, Father God. Bless the service is coming Sunday. May your fire fall. May your power come down in a special way and have the preeminences, Lord. May your presence saturate the place, saturate lives and hearts. Oh God, bless this whole upcoming week, Lord, all what you have in store for us, that your spirit will have the preeminences, that your spirit will have the oversight, that your son, as you go to Germany, may you visit him with power and presence and revelation. Oh God, touch by the Isaac in a special way, Father. And may your presence and glory go with him for to bring honor and glory to the kingdom of God. Oh God, we commit the lives of your people into your hands. We commit the church into your hands. We commit the officers and the elders and the ministry and the laity into your hands that you will keep them and preserve them unto the coming of the Lord. Father, we know only a trained church will stand. Train us, Lord. Train us. We want your training. We want your guidance. We want your leadership. Lead us by your spirit. Guide us by your mighty hand. He must wait upon you. We commit their lives into your hands. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. I trust the Lord be with you and come at a great expectation to see what the Lord will do for us this coming Sunday. God be with you. God bless.